This is Aaron Sloman at the University of Birmingham. I'm going to demonstrate a program written in POP11 that shows one way of proving Pythagoras' theorem. I'm going to read in the program in order to change something before I run it. And the show lib command in the poplog editor up here allows me to read a, a library program. So show lib rc pythag Gorus. Um, and this is uh, POP11 code, which I'm not going to explain in any detail, but I'm going to compile it, which I've now done. Get rid of that. And when I compile it, it prints out some instructions. I don't need this whole file, so I'll shrink it. And um, what I'm going to do now is change the delay here to something longer so that the uh, program doesn't run too fast. So now I'll give the command to compile that and run it, escape D. That produced this picture, which I've moved into the recording area now, which has a triangle, which has a right angle, and now it's got three squares, one on the hypotenuse and one on each of the shorter sides. The program draws some more squares and it should be obvious to you that each of these is just the same size and shape as this square but it's rotated slightly. So that side is the same as that side. We can now look at the square on this side which is here, and then copy it down there. You'll see why in a minute. <coughs> that triangle can be copied down here. Now we're going to copy all the other triangles, which are identical to this, but in different orientations in different places, down into this region here. So that's three of the triangles copied. And the fourth triangle, you can probably see where it's going to go. So now we have these four triangles and two squares making up this whole square. And here we have these four triangles and that square making up this whole square. So we want to show this square plus that square equals that square. But that's the same as saying this square plus this square equals that square. Because that and that are the same. We got that just by sliding it down, keeping the lengths the same. So that has shown that these two blue squares must take up the same amount of space as that big green square. You might think that only works for a particular kind of starting triangle, but this now enables you to see you can abstract away from the original shape and as this triangle changes its shape the whole construction remains possible although the details of how it's made are not shown here. So, if you've understood all that, which I'm not sure a three-year-old child can do, and I'm not sure that all five-year-olds or ten-year-olds can do, but if you've understood it all, then you should now understand why Pythagoras' theorem cannot have any exceptions. So, 